Hopefully, you've been doing a better job of keeping up with Home Assistant than me. But if not, that's okay. No judgment. I've got these two repairs that I need to get taken care of. And in case you're in the same boat, I'm going to walk you through how to fix this and what it means for us going forward. First though, even though these aren't major issues, we need to talk prereqs. Going forward with these types of videos, I'm going to try to call out the things I think you need to know in order to follow along. Home Assistant is always changing. And on top of that, a lot of these videos assume you already know some stuff. I've not always made it clear, but in 2024, that changes. So for this video, I'm assuming you already know how to access your YAML configuration files. If you don't, then the first part of this video won't apply to you because you would have had to manually set these two integrations up using those YAML files. If you want to learn more, though, there is a link to a video in the description where I explain how to do that. But be sure to stick around because the second half will be something you can use. And we are talking about repairs here, which you can find under settings and then system, then repairs. Here, Home Assistant lists anything that needs your attention. Now, let's get to updating the things. I'm not sure when the generic camera got added to the integration panel, but regardless, if your generic camera entities haven't migrated to the integration panel, your entity may stop working with the 2024.2 release, which is coming up pretty quick. But good news, it should have migrated automatically. Before we start making YAML changes though, let's just check. Head to Settings, then Devices and Integrations. If it did migrate, you'll have a generic camera listed like this. If you don't have one of these and you think you should, just hang on, I'll show you how to add one in the second part of this video. To remove this generic camera from our YAML and clear the repair notice, just jump into the YAML editor of choice. I'm using the standalone Visual Studio code, but one of the add-ons for working with your configuration files would work as well. If you know where your generic camera entities are defined in your configuration, you can just navigate to it. But if you don't, I suggest using the search feature just to make sure that you don't miss any of them that you might have forgotten about. In the search box, we're going to look for platform colon space generic. And you can see in the results, it just found one. When we click on it, we get taken right to where it is in our configuration. If you didn't see it in your integration panel in the previous check, then make note of the details here. Then just comment out this code. In Visual Studio Code, you can do that by highlighting the lines. And on the Mac, pressing Command and forward slash, Control slash if you're on Windows. I like to comment these out instead of delete them in case I need to refer to them later. Then we can save our changes, Command plus S if you're on the Mac, Control and S if you're on Windows. At this point, you could head back to repairs and hit ignore, but I suggest leaving it and we're going to talk about why in just a bit. Next, let's take care of that GDAX one. Just like the previous example, you'll want to jump into integrations and check to see if yours migrated already. Chances are though, you aren't using this integration. So I suspect this one isn't going to apply to a lot of you. But for those of you that do need to fix this, once we know whether it's in integrations, we can head over to our YAML files. This time, we're going to search for GDAX colon. And if it found something, click on it and jump right to it. We will once again highlight these lines and press the hotkey for commenting them out. You could also go to each line and type hashtag if you like padding your time to look busy. Now that we have that, we can check our work. I always like leaving the repairs after fixing them because we can let Home Assistant check our work. Simply head to Settings, System, and then in the upper right, click on it and choose Restart Home Assistant. Now, there's nothing wrong with ignoring them in the repair panel and saving this part until you have to reboot, but I like the instant gratification that my button mashing paid off. When Home Assistant comes back up, you can navigate to Settings, System, then Repairs, and if you did your job correctly, those issues will be gone. But for those of us that use these integrations, or perhaps want to use them now after watching this video, adding them is all done via the integration panel. So let's walk through that. The generic camera integration is perfect if you have an IP-based camera that you want to display inside of Home Assistant. I've used these to add the WISE cameras that have been flashed with the RTSP firmware. 
and for FOSCAM cameras. But any camera that's IP-based and supports RTSP should work. This integration is perfect if you have some cameras you want to display on a dashboard. Adding them via the integration panel is pretty easy. We're going to head to Settings, Devices and Integrations, and click the Add button in the lower right, and then search for Generic Camera. And then you get to type some stuff. The web address of the still image your camera provides, the address to view the live feed, the RTSP transport method, authentication, basic will probably be the standard one you use, then your username and password. And you might want to disable the verify SSL cert option. And that's it. Much easier via the UI than doing it manually. And then you'll have a camera entity you can drop into your dashboard. If you're not familiar with GDAX or the Global Disaster Alert and Coordination System, that's quite a mouthful. I know. This is a cloud service that provides information about major disasters like droughts, earthquakes, floods, tropical cyclones, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. And it works by notifying you of these types of events in a specific area. Given that I think part of a smart home's job is to help keep you informed and safe, this I think is a pretty good service. To add this, head back to that integration panel and hit the add button. We're gonna search for GDAX. When you click on it, you'll be prompted for a radius. The default is 500 meters or about 1,640 feet. This integration creates a zone based on the longitude and latitude of your Home Assistant instance. And any of these events in that zone will show up in this sensor. The state of the sensor it creates will be the number of alerts and in the event of an actual disaster, the attributes would include the details. I think mine has only ever shown tropical weather on it. And for the most part, it stays clear. But it could be a useful integration depending on where you live in the world. Moving it to the integration flow was helpful, but unfortunately it came at a cost. Like some of the previous integrations that have migrated from YAML, the GDAX one also lost functionality. I don't see any way to choose which of these events you want alerts on now, like you could previously when you defined it in the YAML. In fact, the documentation still shows an example of how to do that. But now that you have to do it from the UI, I guess you get all of them. Maybe the documentation will be updated when 2024.2 gets released. And it also appears that you lost the ability to define a latitude and longitude manually. So if you wanted to have a second sensor monitoring the location of a loved one in a different location, that ability has been removed. The only config option you have is radius. This is still a useful integration, and I like seeing these get added to the UI, which makes them easier to set up. I just wish it wouldn't mean losing functionality because that really does impact our ability to build a smart home.